normally you don't have a hearing. Why? Because those guys down there, apparently they feel they understand your paperwork. There's no need to call you in. If they, need, if they do have questions, they'll set a hearing date, notify you, and you come in, and then you, you talk. But the only purpose of a hearing is to give the, ch the court a chance to speak or ask questions to clarify points. That's it. Your argument is through when you put that paper in. So knowing that, here's our procedure. Just as I said, when in court, there's no need to argue your case. All of your arguments should have been made in the preceding paperwork. The only reason for a court hearing is to give the court an opportunity to ask questions of the litigants to clarify any points. Now here's a su some suggestions on court procedure. <clears throat> First of all, don't verbally discuss anything in court. Nothing. <clears throat> the judges and attorneys in court are word masters. They are much more practiced at word interpretation and manipulation than you are. Anything you say will be held against you and will provide opportunities to nullify your paperwork. The best thing is not to discuss anything. When the judge asks you anything about your papers or points, you should so only say, I have nothing to say. It's all in my filed papers, Your Honor. Okay? That's it. Do not discuss it. That forces the judge to consider your papers rather than what you may say in the hearing. You open your mouth, you're dead. Okay, because now he interprets. You say it's raining outside and he interprets that to mean there was no rain at all. You know, you have no control over his interpretations. Therefore, don't give him ammunition. All right, he wants to know what you have to say. It's all in the paperwork, Your Honor. I have nothing to say. Second thing, <clears throat> object to anything of which you do not approve that occurs in the courtroom. Okay, I object to the hearing. Of course, if you made the motion, don't object to the hearing, okay? <laughs> but if the other side made the motion, you object to the whole thing. Uh, whatever it is, whatever they say, if you don't like it, object to it. Certainly don't allow any decisions on the part of the judge without objecting, okay? He makes a decision, you object, all right? So here's a, here's a, a, a script. Typical courtroom scenario. Something happens in the courtroom, whatever it is. You say, I object. The judge says, why do you object? You say, it's not my wish. The judge says, if that's the best you can do, you're overruled. And you say, well, for the record, I do object. And then he says, your objection is noted, okay? And he might even say, you're overruled. Well, what you did is you registered your objection. That keeps it open. What yes? About, what about I take exception to your rule? Well, if you want to be an entrepreneur and create new procedures, that's up to you. But I suggest you follow the standard procedure, which is to say, I object. You know, otherwise, you're, you're taking a chance. No, no, that's the second one. You object, he says overruled. Well, if you want to, you can. I mean, but once you've objected, that's it. I mean, he made the ruling. That doesn't mean that he's authorized. It's on record. It's on record. You object. Okay. So can he find you in contempt if you keep objecting to his rulings? Well, it doesn't normally get that way unless you've generated a lot of hate in the courtroom. <laughs> I mean, I, I keep these things friendly. You know, I mean... When, if the judge is, it, it finds you in contempt because you object, that, you, that tells me that something's wrong here in how you handle things. Because objecting is such a standard procedure. Nobody's going to find you in contempt. All you're telling me that he, he, he's using it as an excuse to carry out another agenda. All right? So I, I suggest that uh, you get to that stage, something's wrong. You should have been alerted to yourself long before that, that you're not handling things right. Just to object, you know, and you don't have to be loud. You don't have to be obnoxious. You say it with a smile. You know, I object, Your Honor. How, how do we get the report for that from, to find out if we objected? I mean, is that, do we have to pay for the... Uh, no, don't you know when you object? <laughs> well, if it's like, not recorded... It's recorded in your memory. I mean, you know, you just move forward on these things. If they, you make your claims. 
In your paperwork, if, when you file paperwork later on, you, you state in your paperwork that you had objected. You know, whatever your follow-up paperwork would be. You know, that becomes part of, uh, part of the whole history, you know, of, of the court proceeding. Yeah, you know, I understand that they don't always put things in the record that they should have. Make notes. Huh? Make notes. Yeah, they don't always make notes. You make notes, but they don't. You know, so, so anyway, but you see that little proceeding, just as I showed it there, that's really all that's necessary. My hearings seldom last more than five minutes, okay? Because I don't stand there and argue. I just say object and I let him roll on. What takes me a lot of time is the full day or two days it takes me to write the paper <laughs> to, to reverse his, his decision. But <laughs> That takes time. But, you know, the, the actual proceeding is extremely short normally. Now, I have no control over the other side, but usually the other side doesn't have much to say either. But you can encourage them to say more if you want and run your transcription expenses up. But if you just keep it simple and say, I object, okay? All right, so that's all that is necessary. You then move on to the next item of business, all right? The judge is going to do whatever he chooses. You have not the power to stop him at that time, just as you have no power to stop a robber from robbing you. At this point, your only goal is to object for the record. Later, after you leave the courtroom, you type and file the court order to vacate or correct the judge's decision. But remember, this can only be done if you are the plaintiff, one of the people of the jurisdiction, in a court of record, and have not given anyone, including the judge, any permission to do anything in your case. Okay, you've got to have this thing locked down. And so when that, if you're in a court of record, it's an absolute, no exceptions. The judge cannot make any decisions whatsoever. Okay, you are the decider. <clears throat> and then finally, point number three in a proceeding, if you are, let's say, incarcerated, you know, and they bring you out before a judge, then this next paragraph applies. If you are a defendant who is the petitioner in a habeas corpus or a plaintiff in a counterclaim, you should repeat to the other court your demand to be released. You are cha challenging jurisdiction. Because they asserted jurisdiction, you should from time to time remind them of your demand to be immediately released from their custody. They probably won't release you, but again, you're building the history of the case and this all works against them in the long run. Do you become an injured party? if they continue in custody? Yes, okay. yes, you become eventually an injured party because they held you without jurisdiction, assuming that's the point, assuming that you arrive at the point where you've determined that they don't have jurisdiction. 